Okay. Well, uh, David, why don't you uh, read uh, what you, you know, whatever you brought today? I will do that. I will do that right now. And today is going to be Robert Frost talking about Acquainted with the Night. I have been one acquainted with the night. I have walked out in rain and back in rain. I have outwalked the furthest city light. I have looked down the saddest city lane. I have passed by the watchman on his beat and dropped my eyes, unwilling to explain. I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet when far away an interrupted cry came over houses from another street, but not to call me back or say goodbye. And further still at an unearthly height, one luminary clock against the sky proclaimed the time was neither wrong nor right. I have been one acquainted with the night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me read our opening uh, prayer for us. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshana B'Mitzvah Tav, V'Tzivano La'asok B'Divrei Torah. Amen. Hi, Rabbi. Yeah, welcome, Rabbi. I think there was sort of a miscommunication and uh, because everybody was under the assumption that the carpet is being cleaned today or still drying today, and so I'm by myself here. So, <laughs> I, I, yeah, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, we can. I can hear you perfectly. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, the true. carpet. The carpet cleaning is actually in first. Right. In three weeks. Yeah. Three yeah. weeks. Right. Okay. Next week we have a Shabbat morning service. Okay. Then the twenty first, there are some other things that have to be done on the Saturday, and they've requested that uh, that we not be in the building. So the twenty first will be on Zoom also. Okay. Okay. My so, bad. Anyway, uh, wise man in the uh, temple today. And anyway. Uh, what we're going to do today, I uh, want, want to uh, start off by saying Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And then uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, picking up today uh, in uh, Numbers chapter 10, uh, excuse me, chapter 11, uh, verse 1. It's Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And we're going to go very slowly because there are lots of stories that we're going to be encountering. Would you like me to oh, start, please? If, David, if you would like to read, if you would um, just read verses 1 through 3. I will do that. And the people were as murmurs, speaking evil in the ears of the Lord. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and devoured in the uttermost part of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and Moses prayed unto the Lord, and the fire abated. And the name of that place was called Kaberah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Okay. Now, it, it uh, any any um, any thoughts about this? Uh, what 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 chapter verse are we on, please? Numbers eleven, verses one through three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Marty? Yes. Yeah, I have, you know, a little midrash. I was going to ask if you have something with that, because there are so many empty spaces to, with all of these little stories. Uh, it, it's, it invites lots of midrash. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, Steve, please read it. 
Of course. In this, you know, this uh, discussion of murmuring is just sort of an introduction to the more dramatic stories that happen later. But the uh, the little midrash about the murmuring is uh, uh, God wished to purify the generation of the wilderness. Its moral and spiritual achievements were to become an integral part of the Jewish people's character. Therefore, he led the members of that generation through various stations of which each held a particular spiritual test. Okay, and the station of Kivrota Tava, which will come to soon, uh, the graves of uh, uh, appetite or, or lust, where Hashem led B'nai Israel generated physical cravings. Oh, okay. So they're actually saying that that location caused them to have cravings. Okay. Upon arrival there, the Erav Ra, the who are the uh, you know when when the uh, Israelites left Egypt, they were a mixed multitude. So they weren't just all the descendants of Abraham. There were. Uh, Egyptians who went along with them, who kind of identified with the Israelites, who were, you could call them converts, okay? And they make a little bit of a judgmental uh, statement about these converts in the Midrash. They say, upon arrival there, the uh, Erev, uh, Erev, Erev Rav, the Egyptian converts who were the lowest element among the people, were the first to be overcome by desires. Okay, so there's a little okay. bit. Okay, uh, Steve, you, if you could, if you could read the rest of that when we get to the next paragraph, okay? Because we're we're putting the cart before the horse. Right okay. now, the main question that should be coming up: What is this fire going on around the encampment? Right, right. So they began to grumble about their inability to satisfy their cravings. So so God was already sensing that there were murmurings and cravings that were going to go on, and I'll save the rest for later. Okay, thank you. So what it, what it, when, you, when you're reading this, obviously... Um, I might want to say something. Excuse well, me? Okay, go ahead, Marty. That's all right. Okay. Uh, the, the, the issue here... Uh, is uh, that that the people are are not always ha a happy people. There's always a part of them that's going to uh, be be complaining. Manishtana. Okay. <laughs> that's it, and that's right. uh, stiff. And stiff as a re so, right. so that's okay. the right. first thing. Uh, and th they're they're constantly reminding themselves or being reminded by others and being swayed into th into this uh this uh uh this type of uh thought process uh in in my mind what they should be thinking about is is should be driven by the cortex rather than their midbrain okay and so they're allowing, basically, uh, 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 and I'm here, uh, you have to say, well, why are they doing all of this? Is it part of human nature to complain? And that's a question I'm going to ask you, of you and discuss a little bit. So, Rabbi, you're shaking your head, please. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm nodding, Dad. Uh, you know, but and and I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Certainly, uh, uh, affirming that I the, the same oh, thing. Okay. Yes, okay. I think it's human nature to not not be satisfied and to always be disgruntled and and to complain. Uh, but I, I I did want to point out, especially when you when you said the, that there there there's a a great body of, of midrashic literature. So they, there's one midrash that plays on the 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 biblical writers, the Torah writers, uh, uh, and the name of the place of Tava Era, which is which is based on the same burning right. verb 
that is used for the bush that's not con that's not consumed okay all right. right so that's you know that's a, it's a further example of god's presence right surrounding surrounding the people uh and you know and giving them a chance to be awe fearing and and you know awe inspired but they choose to continue to to uh complain right. and so it's moses who sees that that flame is reminded of the bush and his personal relationship with god and he intercedes on behalf of the people that there's a famous midrash about about all that there's it's based, uh, based on the you know kivo er that that the 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 bush is uh, the the bush is burning but not consumed okay oh okay yes, michael okay um uh Ma mary used the word fetching which is a, a kind of a good word and uh the jews have always complained and and there was one individual a rabbi who they missed that is not in the Torah, who talks about kvetching a lot, and that's Jackie Mason. And oh. they missed that. Yes. Jackie Mason in the Talmud? How did that happen? I don't know, but uh, how did I miss that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a mystery to me. But I don't see anybody smiling or laughing. It's a sad I, I am. I it's am. a sad thing. We had two, three, three people. Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi Mason, Rabbi Mason in, the, in the Bulabasta translation. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, and, and kvetch literally is sort of a, isn't it a pinch or something? It's like, eh, you know, it's something, it's literally, it's something physical. It's like you know, a little bit, a, a pinch and a twist, kind of. So it's not just complaining. It's, it's literally a Okay, so why do people have a tendency to quetch? Tikkun olam. <laughs> no, Tikkun olam. unless they unless they mean I have a problem, please help me. Yeah, no, I'm I'm joking, Marty, but I'm saying I know, I know, but it, but I'm I'm being serious Tikkun about olam. that. It that when people fetch into an extreme, so okay. yeah, when, but when people fetch, you know, and talk about how bad things are, and all of that, and beware of this, and beware of that, and we, the rest of this chapter is it really is dealing with fetching. Steve is very correct. The rest of this this chapter, we we are going to have lots of examples of fetching. And, and, but does, which is better, which is better to kvetch and, and, and look for confirmation bias from all those around you, or to t see an issue and be, turn it into a positive thing? I think that's going to be a topic after we're finished with this, but we may want to come back to, yes, Rabbi well, Mary. And then Michael. Boker Tov, Shabbat Shalom. I have a note here from the past that says oh. uh, in the book, and forgive my father who didn't let me write on bin books, but uh, it's an issue of concrete versus abstract. Yeah. Uh, this is a high way of saying it. But we're talking about the people that just was born or not even yet. Mm -hmm. They are child, and when does child uh, cry? When they're hungry, when they're wet, that they very basic needs. At that moment, and, and even if we look at our people in distress situations, uh, I don't want to open the, in distress situations, you don't think about Oh, freedom. Oh, I want to create my own bees. And yes, we are suffering, but in the future, etc., etc. It's a very concrete thing. You have hungry people, you have them in the heat, you have them 
uh, they were fed in Egypt, uh, and and you cannot think into the tikkun olam. Excuse me, still. Uh, you cannot think in those higher levels when you are in basic needs, and um, and your brain, as you said, Marty, very well. You know, it's not your cortex way uh, working, but very basic needs, very childish ones. Okay, it's good. Yes, Michael, please. Uh, this complaining. It can arise from several issues. One would be, uh, well, why am I the only one? Why am I facing this? Am I the only one? Uh, why mm -hmm. is this happening to me? And uh, not to give it uh, give it thought, because when 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 what the way I say when people complain. Uh, they 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 do they do it un unconsciously without thinking that other people are suffering or have having the same situation that would that would tend to ease their suffering or complaining it may not work all the time but it's 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 kind of a mental thought that might help that's <laughs> We're going to come into, as we unfold, unfold this, uh, I want to keep all of these ideas open because there are certain answers that come up in the rest of the discussion. But this is a very important uh, uh, concept uh, in, that, should, you know, hit it, that should hit us between the eyes because we, hear, we, we live in an age where everyone is complaining. That's the only thing we hear on the news. And yet, there is so much more good being done by people finding solutions to various issues, and we never hear anything about it. So one of the prospects that this does is it leads to a loss of hope. And if too many people start seeing the world as gloomy, well, then they don't see any of the good anymore. And it's simple things, like the morning prayers. Okay, we're, hey, it's great to be alive every day. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it back, it, you know, and, and the morning prayers. Give thanks to God for returning the soul and that everything's functioning. You're removing the silver lining. Well, I'm not removing it. I'm 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 parting the clouds so that you can see the silver lining. That's the that's the difference. Well, the people that the people that are suffering do not see the silver lining. That's what that's I'm That's right. That's what I'm referring to. That's right. You you do that and 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 uh, so you re the, pe the people that do that, they remove anything positive uh, of, of what can be after, you know, do the best you can and let it pass. And then there will be. That Wasn't silver. there a song about a silver lining? Uh, Probably. Sounds like a song. Mm-hmm. But, of you know, those it, are it came out during the Great Depression. There was mm -hmm. so much negativity. But... Look to the silver for the silver lining. But they were hungry, okay. Marty. They were hungry. When you are hungry, the silver line is not very helpful. So uh, there are basic needs. And here the people are thirsty before with the Mara, and now they are hungry. So I forgive them. Uh, I don't think that they were too intellectually thinking at that point when, when your stomach is rambling and uh and uh the same thing happened with our people in, in camps uh it it's not in and, and it's not fair to judge them and alta dunet till you get to his place don't judge that because these are basic needs and uh you know we heard the my favorite i'll reveal 
candidate uh, saying when they came to mama and said, blah, 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 look what happened, mom would say, so what are you going to do about it? So there are two different things here. One is looking and seeing the positive. And the second one, what shall I do about it? And these are people that are not a hopeless, but they are, what shall I do? I'm, I'm a slave. Okay, you took me out, but I'm, I'm unable mm -hmm. to do anything about it. Well, maybe what maybe this is what this ring of fire is important. Uh, oh, it's it's that reminds me of another song. Uh, it, it, as a and it, there's there's something here that if you it, that there are certain things that that you're very correct, Mary, that you are you have a uh, hunger in the case of ring of fire that's drug addiction okay uh and in the and in the great depression it was you know it, it, it was all clouds but look for that silver lining so that maybe that ring of fire is a is a reminder you know what? Do, you know, I, it, it, it's going over your. It, it's escaping all the, the the people that that maybe part of this requires a little responsibility to to help pull themselves up out of this. And what else could they do? What else? Could only veg. That's the only thing left. Well. Not everybody in the concentration camps fetched. The majority would give their lives. They, 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 I, I realize all that, but not everyone. No, not exactly. Everyone. They looked for a silver lining in all of that. Mm. They, they had a huge ring of fire, fire around them. Yeah, well. But I'm not saying it was, it wasn't. It, excruciatingly horrible but there are some people that did think there were things that they could do for themselves so they could accept the the bad tragedy that had befallen them you know you, you talk about song uh the one song that comes to mind would be somewhere over the rainbow that came from the holocaust that, that also Yes. Oh, Marty. That's Marty, right. Something. Yes, Steve. Um, I'm also thinking of pennies of heaven, pennies from heaven. Yes, there were tons okay. of songs that another, came out. But, but I had another uh, point I wanted to make. Um, also, um, yeah, unfortunately, Gail isn't here today, but uh, I'm sure she would be reminding us that the Buddhists actually have some very uh, important wisdom on this particular issue that uh, one of the main causes of, of suffering, uh, uh, you know, just our everyday people is we, we are very focused on what we don't have and what we could have, what we ought to have, and also uh, thinking about um, you know, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing that happened, okay? Things happen in life. Life has ups and downs, okay? But our tendency is to give those events uh, grades, okay? Mm, this is a C minus event. This one was an A plus, you know? You, you do that, you don't have to do that, you know, if you just you know, try not to do that and see, this is an event, we'll get through it. And sometimes it's very easy to say, because the obvious response to that is, well, what happens if your house is destroyed and your whole family is gone? You know, you're going to tell me to blow it off? And No, you can't. Exactly it takes time. Saying. That's not exactly what we're saying. But, but the, in general, in general, it lessens the suffering in life if uh, we remove those uh, those attachments. 
you know, in those that tendency yes. to to judge the quality of what's happening and why, how come everybody else has a, you know, is going to these nice restaurants and I'm going to the cheap ones or, you know, don't don't look at everybody else's plate so much, you know, just, That's right. just your own and, and just deal with what's happening with you. Very good, Steve. Very good. I know yeah. there's going to be disagreement. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rabbi uh, Norm wanted to talk. Oh, okay. And then, and uh, uh, did you want to say something, Rabbi Mary? Well, I'll say after Rabbi Norm. Okay. And then Beth. Um, so there, uh, I would share a couple uh, insights that some of the scholars give here too. Um, one might catch us a little bit off, a little bit by surprise. Uh, but there's why I forget which one it is to attribute which theory. But but one is that verses one through three, let's call it a paragraph of chapter 11, is just an intro. Mm -hmm. As Marty says, and clued us in for those who aren't, aren't aware, we're going to now encounter quite a few experiences we've had some already since they crossed through the sea but that we're now going to encounter a number of experiences incidents uh times and places of of complaining fetching uh rebellion you know all all of these different kinds of things so the, so there's some who see that this um uh, verses one through three is just kind of an intro not referring to any one specific, uh, uh, you know, okay. fetch, fetch session, but that okay. Here's that's what now what we're going to be talking about. The narrator says um, because this this particular paragraph doesn't say what it is that they're complaining about. Right. Just that they're it says they're complaining bitterly. All right. Now there's also. For those who are aware of the Hebrew grammar, the verb of complaining here is in a reflexive sense. So there are those who are who are saying okay, that they're complaining about themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, that they're expressing their own lack of confidence or or whatever it might be. And that that Ba'ozne Adonai, that was then heard by God. And then God and Moses decide in their conversation of what to do to boast, you know, to to boost up the people's confidence and whatever. So there's 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 a there's a strain of the literature that that sees it um that that way. And then there's one more that I would point out. And that's the end of verse two. There are some scholars who have said, so the end of the translation is, Moses prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. But tishkaha esh, okay? But there are some that say that, that this is a scribal error, that it's not that the fire died down, it's that the people died down, not not lost their lives but they're, they're they're complaining they're fetching died dying died down quieted because of god god hearing them and moses praying on their behalf and the fire and 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 all that and they were then they felt a little bit better they were they were they were, they were supported so um you know, the, just a couple of little insights into some of the critical scholarship the way that that they approach those first three verses not to take anything away from what we're what we've been talking about yeah i'm um, just just uh, uh concerning the word that hold you... on uh steve, steve hold on beth steve beth wanted to talk okay now i'll i'll, I'll move down the line that's fine uh mary i thought you were next yes yes mary. never mind i can wait Oh, okay. I spoke already. Thank you. Um, actually, Norm, what you just said, I thought was really enlightening yeah. because um, it, if you look at this as um, all of the distress and the murmuring and everything that was going on could 
the fire could be representative of what happens when you have a whole people who are so disgruntled, you know, that, that this, this, that, that literally life goes up in flames and they have, you know, tie, and addressing what Miri said earlier, uh, they've gone, well, from the frying pan into the fire. And so the whole, and, and to what Steve said in terms of Buddhism, if you look at what the uh, very famous Jewish Buddhist Ram Das said, be here now. If you are being in the present and your present is, is, is unpalatable and you don't have enough to, you don't have your, you know, what you consider your basic needs fulfilled, then the question is, what do you do? And I would think that a friend and I used to call it fetching with a purpose. So if we called each other and said, okay, I need to vent about something and and we fetched, but then in doing so, we then took action to change the situation. Right. Then the fetching with a purpose was great. If all we did was, uh, if, if somebody calls and complains about the same thing to me over and over again over a year and the person doesn't actually do anything about it, that's not fetching with a purpose. That's just sort of wasting time. Um, and so, you know, as the people are saying, okay, we remember the good stuff. It's kind of like being in a bad relationship and you get out of the relationship and suddenly you remember all the good things. So, you know, Egypt was the bad relationship and now they're remembering, oh, well, we had this great food and we had fish and we had all this other stuff. And then there seems to be this total blanking of, and oh, by the way, we were also slaves. <laughs> so um, I, I think what everyone has said is really enlightening, at least to me. Sounds good. Thank you, Beth. Uh, you Rabbi, uh, I know I still have on the list Rabbi Mary and uh, Steve. Well, I'm going to be... Um... And it's not going to be the uh, 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 Satan uh, uh, lawyer. I'm going to defend the. That's people. devil's advocate. The devil's yeah, advocate. that's the yeah, one that's I want. Right. I gathered that. I didn't get it right. Okay. <laughs> I think I like Satan's <laughs> lawyer. You can right. read my mind. Okay. Um, I'm going though. to advocate for the people. I think that it's unfair for all of us to even think that they should have done something, that they should have seen in the, excuse me, Beth, be in the present, think about freedom. I think that that's not fair. Oh, and that's not what I was saying, Mary. Hmm. You misunderstood. No, no, I'm saying, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not blaming you. I'm saying being in the present. I know that people tell me that and we advocate that. You know, be in the moment. Don't think about past and future because they don't exist. But it's, uh, as I, as you said, it's basic needs. You know, look at Maslow. Just feed me. The other thing that I want to go in is a little bit about, um, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'll go to these days in a second. But if I go back to uh, why we are somehow angry at the people of what they're doing, is that they don't trust the decision of God and Moshe. They, you know, they complain that it was not done right. And, uh, you know, those of us or those of you who believe that there is a plan, um, just trust the plan and, and you'll see that things are going to be better in the future because I, God or whatever, is going to protect you. That's why we did what we did. And they are against the decision to take them out of Egypt. So shut up and forget the garlic and the onions. I trust me. But now I want to go to these days and to the issue <clears throat> of the time of the Holocaust. 
Many young people say, why the Jews did not rebel? Okay, fine. You know, look at that situation and stop judging because you don't know the framework of what was happening there. And coming in today, go to the state of Israel and see, oh, look what's happening. Uh, some say, why we don't assassinate uh, a baby and then everything is going to, why don't they do something? Well, they are doing what they can. They are not doing what they are not able to do. Unless we sitting in the United States in Tucson and eating the garlic and the onions, oh, we have the solution, stop doing this. The Palestinians that lost everything cannot think about rebelling. They cannot see about, you know, just get rid of Hamas and everything will be okay. I mean, we need to look at the context of this scratch. Uh, it's uh, in the past when I was younger, I really hated that scratching because oh well, 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 think of freedom, freedom, freedom. But today that I'm pretty old, I'm looking at it with different eyes. And sorry, uh, Steve, that I took so much of your time. No, no, you didn't. No, no, that was all very, very it was important. important to, it was important to mention. And, and Marty, believe it or not, I have a short comment, okay? Um, sure. And, and, and it uh, references what the rabbi uh, mentioned before, uh, if people remember, the reflexive verb that gets translated as complaining, mit onen, mit onen. And actually, you know, as I like to really focus on what the word really meant in Hebrew, I think that that's probably the... the uh, Shorish, the root is the same root, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the Hebrew speakers here, okay? But but I think it's the same as Inui, if Inui is with an Aleph. So it's really, it's not just complaining, it's torturing yourself, really. Well, Inui is with I. Okay, well, my mistake then. Okay, I know, so, it. yeah, I, yeah. Because <laughs> I wasn't sure, okay. Yeah, but, yeah. It would be nice if it, if it was with an olive. Because yeah, but you can say <laughs> on, you know, and on is power. So, Aleph, Bav, no. How, how is that, yeah, how would you sort of draw? Yeah, that? but this yeah, is no, on name. No, 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 sounds very good. This is on name. This yeah. is not on, it's on name. On, on name. This is the Shorish. Which actually, yeah. Me, me, anyway, okay. Well, that's that's don't a, get mistracked. is actually a very different word. I don't know if we want to get into that. But, right, right. Um, which is which is I I can't really see the connection with with the question, but okay. Well, that's my thing. okay. <laughs> and, and 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 but uh, so we spoke a little bit about the fire. We've spoke. Uh, the next question I would ask is what would have happened if it read... Oh, uh, Michael Gervin is raising his... Oh, hand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. Go ahead. I, I just want to respond to what Mary said about being unfair. Uh, I I understand, and I certainly respect that, that uh, your comment about being unfair. Uh, however, if it's in the Torah and we study it, uh, we can also look at it as a uh, an experience to learn from and to discuss it from that point of view. Uh, and just like what we're doing, you know, right now, it's it's not, I don't see it as totally being unfair, but just learning possibly from that experience, uh, whatever we can. And as far as the... Uh, a more difficult a more difficult comment for me would be the Holocaust and why the, the Jews didn't fight back. Uh, it's been it's the nature of Jews not to fight. It's the nature of Jews to really be uh, 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 
Passive. You try to. Uh, passive. What? Passive. Yeah, more <laughs> so, somewhat passive and uh, avoid fighting. Let's put it that way. To to avoid it, which is is very good to do. But it's been a habit. I think Jews have got into a. I heard somebody talk about this not too long ago. But Jews are in a habit. They they follow from years ago. They follow the same. The their, their same thinking in politics and and self defense and all these kind of things that had led up to what happened on the after the Holocaust. What recently happened? Terrible. It's worse than it. Worse than a tragedy. That 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 senseless murder on October seventh, twenty three, and uh, I think that Jews, just personally, I can get into a much deeper discussion, but it wouldn't be good. It just would not be good. But it's just a, it's a habit with so many Jews. Not everyone, but the high high majority. It's the, the thinking that it's a habit. You got to break that habit. And that's something I would like to talk about, but it would have to be under different circumstances than this. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. The question I was going to, thank you, Michael. The, the, what I was, the question I was going to ask, uh, the people uh, cried uh, in verse two, it says the people cried out to Moses and Moses prayed to the Lord and the fire broke down. What would it, you think it would could have been written uh, instead if the people joined with Moses and prayed? Say that again, Marty. In if this read, the uh, the the, uh, the people cried out to Moses. Okay. Uh, and what is the difference here if the people cried out to Moses and and uh, it says Moses prayed to the Lord, but suppose the people also pray uh, joined Moses in that prayer. That's anachronistic. They that 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 wasn't part of the practice at that point. I am aware only, of that. It was only Moses and Aaron. That's right. Uh, you know, and 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 the priests who participated in a prayer ritual. But but if the story read that, Rabbi. Oh, if oh yes, yeah. that's that's why I said if that were placed that way, it would have been a, a possibly a, a skip over time. We don't need to read the rest of this. <laughs> but it's but the point is that uh, maybe that's part of the. A, a, a midrashic lesson to put it into mo more modern times mm -hmm. that maybe if something works well that needs to be reinforced rather than just complaining because the people are getting to know what's fostering some of this also in if you think about leadership you can tell everyone what to do, but it's much more effective if you say, join me in doing this. No matter what it is, when, whatever you're trying to, to achieve, whether it's in, in your family situation, a national situation, whatever, it, it, it you have to explain it in terms that a child will understand that the population will understand that they are part of this too it's not just one person and that we're going to be reading about in, in a short while too that's going to be uh chapter three or four i, I mean yeah uh, not uh chapter but uh paragraph three or four but what if they joined in Maybe the outcome would have been a little different. They would just, by joining in this prayer, to say, we overlooked this and repented, and 
you know, and explain things. Would have been a different series of stories that come come out here that we're going to be reading about. Well, so you we know what? I'm looking at another time that uh, that we uh, complained. Uh, that's in uh, Exodus uh, after they left Mitzrayim, and the people complained. Everyone complained to Moshe and yes. Aaron. And uh, why did you let her die in the desert? Blah blah blah. And then, uh, and then Adonai speaks to Moshe. Uh, Moshe is not the one complaining. It's like Adonai heard the people. And mm -hmm. the same happened when they were in Egypt and they were saved. It's because the people yes. shout, no, yelled to, to someone. Uh, I don't know that they had Adonai at that time, but uh, it was the entire people complaining. And here the word, again, English, not English, mitonenim is in plural. <laughs> Everyone is complaining. Now, the issue that uh, Rabbi uh, Norm said, you know, the, 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 and probably here is that Moshe asked God uh, to stop the fire. So we have him still uh, a mediator between the people and God. Um, and it's... But if I to it's about the people crying. That's, that's singular. Yeah, because it's the people. Right. right. It's about the people. Now, the question is, palel, Marty. here it says pray. But it palel is not exactly pray. It's a new concept, as Rabbi Norman was saying. So I'm not sure what it meant here. It's like palel, pilel, that has to do with judging. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure what does it mean in Moshe it palel, which was uh, translated as prayer. I'm not sure. Um, Right, it's uh, agreed. It, it, we, we don't see that verb that often in the Torah. Yeah. Okay, you know, so it it almost certainly did not mean what we associate right. the the word to mean the mean, mean now. I mean, it, it could be, uh, Marty, as, as we were all, uh, you know, assuming, it could be more like interceding. Yes, you yes. Know, yeah. Okay. Right. You know, rather rather than rather than there are other words for pleading, there are other words for you know begging. Um, so uh, it's a legitimate 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 question, uh, and there and there's the there's the progression of you know all the as as Rabbi Miri was starting to say that that it starts with all the people in the plural. Okay, they're all they're all complaining. Right. Then then the description is that in in the singular that the people cried. It was just, it's in one voice. Okay, and then it goes to be then it, it falls on Moses' shoulders to actually be the one to speak with God. But God God heard heard the people, but ultimately it came down to Moses's intercession yeah, before yeah. anything was done. Right. At this point, they talk to Moshe. They know that, yeah, that he has a red line with God and they cannot talk directly. Right. But right. Uh, it, it's an interesting combination there and, and comparing the first quetch with this quetch. Yeah. Okay. But yes, yes, Beth. Well, I was just going to say... Um... You know, as as we would read further into this chapter, I think this some things become somewhat clearer having yes. to you know, having to do with the the burden uh upon Moses 
Yes, because this is, he is right. the line to God. And we haven't gotten to the point yet where we don't need someone to intercede for us. That We haven't gotten to the point where we get to speak directly to God ourselves. Each, you know, each individual, everything is as a group. And if you take any group of people, uh, if, if I was a slave in Egypt and somebody said to me, here's a way out. And oh, by the way, if some guy who speaks to a burning bush to somebody we can't see, I might say, well, I don't know about that part, but I want to get out of slavery. And so, so the, the levels of, of trust and belief are going to be very varied, just as they are in any congregation where, you know, we don't all share the same brain. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm interested in getting further into this. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But at this point, at, at, at this point, it, this is almost a, a story in and of itself, because yeah. it, you know, you it uh, it centers around uh, around God. Okay, it, it you know, and it, it, God's emotion. Hmm, I'm using that purposefully. Because it's it's he's getting annoyed again, and he sets this fire ablaze. It's like a warning, a warning sign. Yeah, go ahead, Rabbi. Yeah, yeah, there's one, there's one more thing. Not to take it too far afield, but it's also very possible that there was an oasis or a, a or a place in the desert that was well known already with the name of Tavera or whatever the the Arabic or something pronunciation was it. And they and, and people knew that place and were saying, well, wonder why it's called that way. And so some storyteller sure. came up, you know, and said, yeah. let me tell you why yeah. it's called Tavera. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh you know, and 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 that's that's just as possible as any as anything else because we know that scientifically we know that's the case with some other places got it any other comments well beth since you you i marty one small one now the fire wasn't among everyone but at the end of right. the group which is yeah, on the edges of the encampment well. that's right it's, it was surrounding them. So instead of a pillar of fire, it was a ring of fire. Shall we all sing? I fell mm. into a burning ring of fire. Johnny Cash. Even yes. I know this. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we were mentioning all of these earlier, uh, the different songs and like that. Uh, so but, now, Beth, but I'm you but would... I'm probably the only one in in this class in this group who has ever played one of Johnny Cash's guitars. Oh Ooh. my! Oh boy! Ooh. Now you have instead of <laughs> okay, then, instead then, of then, add that to my to my resume. For instead, of, thing, right? instead of a Midrash on Rosh Hashanah, you can do that. It will sound nice. <laughs> oh, boy. Can you get yeah, right? It, it, you know, it, it, we, we, often, we often overlook things in, the, in, in music. And uh, in, in, in music, uh, classically, they were, there, there's a, a group of compositions they're not quite symphonies, but they're called tone poems because they they they're written with a theme, a, a, a totally different theme in mind. Uh, and uh, for ex and just for purposes of mentioning it, there's a song, the Molden Owl, and uh, it's basically a river. It's about a river and all of the different types of people that the different that have communities on this along this river, 
And as a result, the th the music changes dramatically. And there are rapids. There are, there are all kinds of things. And so the music changes with the flow, and then it opens out into a larger body of water at the end. And it's a, and if you look at the music this way, and today we have very in we still have ballads among, that are out there, and we had other songs uh, during the uh, times of need. Uh, you had folk music. We we look at it from that standpoint, but they were all uh, about human emotion, human needs, and this here. This portion may be in a response to what we were discussing last week when we were talking about, oh, the, this is written in poetic form. You know, the, 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 the two verses between the, uh, the inverted and backward nuns. And maybe this is a response to this. Okay, because uh, it, it's, and I'm just saying, just tossing that out uh, to, to mull it over, and I'm not aware of any anything being written, but it, the verses uh, 10, uh, 35 and 10, 36, uh, uh, it, it, it basically is in praise of God and what God is doing for the Israelites. Uh, and and Moses' role in everything, but maybe this is a a, a a a what happens when you don't believe in entirety of verses thirty five and thirty six. Uh, yeah, Marty, and uh, to go back for a second, have you ever seen how music is actually set to a motion picture? Are you familiar oh, with yes, the yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's fascinating, uh, it's, it's, yeah. It, it is. Uh but uh and the themes that that are that are used uh in in the motion in any motion picture they're very you have variations on the theme to depict the emotion of the of the people and it resonates with us so that we feel differently. So could it be that if since this is written either as poetic or a song for verses 35 and 36 that we discussed, maybe what's not written in song is an attempt to say, well, wait a minute, all, all this is good, but this also is going on. And they should have been thinking about it verses 35 and 36, but they had even forgotten that. And just to to re reiterate those, when the ark was to set out, Moses would say, advance, O Lord, may your enemies be scattered, and may your foes flee before you. And when it halted, he would say, return, O Lord, you are Israel's myriads of thousands. And, and we had a very lengthy discussion about that. So is this sort of like saying, well, if you if you feel that strongly about verses 35 and 36, which we do with Torah readings and uh, portions of the Torah readings it, it, on Sabbath services and the high holidays. Uh, but why would we, um, uh, it, 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 why is this following afterward? We can say we believe, but are we really believing if we're always fetching? Is that part of this whole this whole series here? And and I I know we tend to pick up the reading, you know, of a passage. But what it, it, coming to think about it, here we have a lot of goodness, and even the golden calf story it falls into this category. When you have when you have a uh, uh all the, the the goodness of of all of the ten commandments being uh, given to us uh and then 
all of a sudden, and yes, we're going to do it. And all of a sudden, everything changes and we're going to build a gold, golden calf. And of course, it upsets God and Moses. Here too, we're running into a similar type situation. So is it sort of to say that we that we create our own misery? Just thinking. So anyway, uh, th yes, Grace, did you want to say something? I was just agreeing with you, Marty. Oh, okay. We're, like so, we're our own worst enemy, you know? Yeah. I'm trying well, to simplify it uh, in, in some way. Well, well yes, couldn't, couldn't that fall into the category of God helps those who help themselves in, in a way? Hmm. Yeah. That may be part of it, too. So anyway, um, the very good... This was a great discussion, but let's move on unless somebody wants to go back with this and, and say something else here. So if we if we would read verses uh, 4 through 6, okay? It, 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 some of it has already been mentioned, okay? And uh, so if... Uh, 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 I forgot who even read before. Beth, do you want to read this? Sure. Sure, okay. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. Uh, I would ask uh, the Hebrew speakers, is, is lust actually the word translation? Um, uh, yes, it, oh, that's, a, that's a decent... Yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. a decent translation. Okay. Yeah. And the children of it's one Israel. one step up, one step up from just desiring. Okay. Or craving. And the, <laughs> and the children of Israel also wept on their part and said, "Would that we were given flesh to eat. We remember the fish which we were wont to eat in Egypt for naught, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic." But now our soul is dried away, and there is nothing at all. We have not saved this manna to look to. I was so taken with, we're talking food, 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 and then suddenly we're in Nefesh. Yeah. How'd that happen? That's we a have very nothing nice to eat, question. And now our soul, that's a big leap. I have a different translation that it's our gullets are are shriveled. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if any if anyone has another. Yes, Steve. Well, well, nefesh, you, you know, of course, in in it's Jewish soul. in in rabbinic tradition, there isn't just one soul, right? Um, souls and level of levels of soul, and the nefesh. Is, is maybe the lowest, is the most animalistic. Mm -hmm. so, so it's legitimate to say that, you know, your soul hungers for food because, you know, in the old way of looking at it, in the ancient way of looking at it, your soul was fed by the food, your animalistic soul, your low soul, lowest soul. And I, I did want to add a little bit of a midrash here too. That's something that came up. I'll just mention it very shortly, that the, according to the rabbis, the mention of meat is not really just meat. Correct. But when they, when they say meat, the meat we had in Egypt, they're really talking about all the good stuff and cravings that they could satisfy in Egypt before they got the Torah and had a lot of restrictions. So, so they're sort of they're they're not just talking about food. They're talking about oh, gee, things were a whole lot easier easier in Egypt when we were slaves because we didn't have all these rules to follow, too. <clears throat> yes, uh, the, and, under and midrash you know, in 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 Plout, that underscores what you just said. Yeah, yeah. And, and the rabbis 
what what did I want to say? It, 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 it's Midrash it says that the riffraff and the Israelites felt a gluttonous craving for meat. This is a figure of speech for the people had cattle for food and their memories were of fish and vegetables. What they desired was human flesh, that is sexual excess, even incest. Okay. So and that's, that's a Midrash cool. also. And there's a lot. Uh, uh, according to uh, to Rashi, he's he suggests that uh, the people are really asking for a miracle. And Nachmanides adds that some uh, that the people may have eaten some cattle, but but knew it would not have sufficed, I guess, for the multitudes. You know, it's good midrash. Any any other comments? Um, we alluded to some of this in our discussion before. Yeah, Marty, I'm sorry, if I may. Are we assuming, Please. and I think that's a big jump, in in verse, at the beginning of verse four, mm -hmm. okay, the, the first, there's an A part and a B part in the verse. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Asaf Suf, I love that, I love that word, okay, you know, it's... <laughs> That's absolutely. That's the you know the the mixed multitude, if you will, the hangers on. I call it mob. <laughs> I think that mob explains more. Uh, uh, mob. Some... Okay, the sure. Yeah. That's, that, yeah. You know that's that's fine. But but uh, but it seems that the the mob the asaf suf is different from bnei yisrael. Mm hmm. Okay, so in in the A part, it's this mob that felt the craving, you know, the the, the right. you know the the desire, the hunger, whatever. And is that because they're on the outskirts, the ones that we we talked about that were on the you know the outskirts of the of the camp, and then the Israelites, the Bene Israel. Do they just join in? That's what it says, yeah. yeah. You know, or, or you know, so in other words, the complaining didn't start with the Israelites. No. There was this, you know, there was this murmur, the, and that, that's, that's the way we encounter it earlier on in the Torah, is that there's a murmuring on the outsides of the camp. Mm -hmm. And then the, then the quote-unquote silent majority jumps in yeah. right and they join in as opposed to the israelites hearing the those on the outskirts their complaints their hunger and the israelites jumping in and saying we need to help them okay so it's, well, yeah well we're, we're we're hungry too you know do something Moses, do something about us, as opposed to Moses, we need to help them. There's there's two different ways of looking at the looking at it here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, could I say something, Martin? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, unfortunately, you know, we we like to think of ourselves, you know, as we're reading this in a positive light, but uh, there is um a certain amount in certain stages and it even persists now of uh elitism within our tribe okay and so there's a little bit of blame and this is elaborated further in the midrashic commentary but oh yeah the ones who started it were these you know the asaf su mixed multitude the egyptians who were just hanging on and they said oh yeah yeah we like the idea of <laughs> leaving with you um 
and it's just kind of blaming them and and pinning pinning it on them initially, and then they sort of stirred people up, and that's that's how it happened. This is uh, something. It's a concept that uh, you know we struggle in modern Judaism. I think you know not not putting myself forward as a rabbinic scholar, but you know, and I I, I welcome you know more more knowledgeable opinions on this, but. Uh, you know, we there there is a certain concept of the chosen people, um, and uh, that that's something that has to be redefined in modern Judaism because it makes us a little uncomfortable. You know, we like to, and and I guess the reconstructions reconstructionists took it to an extreme that uh, you know Rabbi Kaplan totally uh, redid the brachot on the uh, Torah readings and removed, you know, who chose us from all the people. He said, that's not nice and that's not modern and we're not going to say that anymore. So, I yeah. want to add that this, uh, for the first time, Very I pay team. attention to the fact that this complaint started with a group within Am Israel. It wasn't the entire group. Uh, I think that the first time when they they cried to be, when they were uh, slaves, it, it says, Vayitzak Bnei Israel. It wasn't just a group. And then later on, we see that the group of Korach only was punished because of what they did. So we see pockets of uh, people that ignite, ignite the, 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 the fire, that ignite the uh, silent majority. And that's something that um, I think we need to pay very close attention to that as a society and as what's going on in the Torah as well, that it's, uh, it's not everyone, but there is a group and then more people uh, join. That's uh, very interesting. And yeah, the, 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 Torah, the Torah refers to it as kitot kitot. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. You know, that the, the, there are different, today we would say sects. You know, sects. there are different, yeah. you know, you, yeah. know, you said yeah. pockets, you know, Cut. different, different, yeah. different sects that approach, that approach the problem in, in, in different ways. Yeah. You That's know, very it's, interesting. It's always, it's always been, always been the case. And it's not tribes because you have the tribes. No, it's not the tribes, right? And that's right. So it's within, yeah, that's great. And we're going to be reading something momentarily uh, that that uh, underscores what uh, Rabbi Miri is discussing, and uh, uh, Rabbi Norman was also mentioning. So uh, if we could uh, read. It, it, this is going to be a little lengthy. Grace, did you have your hand up before? Again? Oh, I, yeah, thank you. I, I was um, reading the commentary and, and got it, you know, a little bit more information, but it's already been mentioned. You know, I, I think what st struck me off number four was. I think the Israelites wept and then they spoke. And I, I'm not sure why that jumps off the page at me. It's just like you, you said, well, the Israelites may have stopped and said, we need to help these people because they're going down the wrong path. And we're all here together. And then they, you know, they asked for help through Moses. So I, I, I was just, Acknowledging that, that's all. Okay. And the commentaries are pretty wide open. Yes, and they there's are. There's a lot there, and I guess that's just part of the midrash as well. So, but thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and and Grace, uh, Grace, would you, uh, would you care to read a little bit? I can. Okay, if you would, it, 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 verses 7, uh through nine, uh, just as sort of like a reiteration of what we read before in uh, ex in, in 
you know, in, in Exodus. Okay. But it, if you would just, if you would just um, read verses seven through nine. He got to. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and in color it was like a dedulum. The people would go about and gather it, grind it between milestones, or pound it in a more a and mortar. a mortar bowl. Well, it's my eyesight, and it's oh. the word's broken too. Mortar bowl, more, more, mortar. Boil it in a pot and make it into cakes. It tasted like rich cream. When the dew fell on the cap at night, the manna would fall upon it. Okay. So this is what they, you know, they were doing with the manna. Um, were there any other ways to to prepare manna? Several. According to the commentary, it, it speaks about that. Can I read that? Sure. All right. Manna is described here as a rich and tasty food suitable for various modes of preparation. This positive depiction of manna underscores the unjustified complaints of the people. Some scholars identify the manna with the edible sap of the tamarisk tree that forms flaky sweet pellets in conjunction with the activity of the plant lice. Its description here differs from Exodus. Okay. Marty? Could you, yes. No. Oh, Steve, Steve, you're, you're okay. It, it didn't light up, so I, I, I couldn't, uh, I didn't know who was talking. Go ahead. Oh, and, and it, you know, just another uh, midrash on mm -hmm. uh, manna, okay? is at least according to some commentators, the manna was more of a spiritual nourishment rather than a physical one. And so what they were uh, craving was this very physical satisfaction of the meat, which is, of course, expanded mm -hmm. to other things, including carnal pleasures. So... I'm sorry, I didn't get to finish reading that. Um, this is reconciled in classical Jewish thought by suggesting that the manna could take on various flavors. So they're talking about they remember all these spices and different ways of food and different types of food. Now this is all that they have. But it seems to me like God is saying, OK, well, I can do this for you. I'm giving you this sustenance. and." it can take on many different flavors without you putting anything to it because I prepared it for you. Good point. Any other comment? Very good. Okay. I wonder what it would have tasted like if uh, somebody had uh, roasted it. Sounds to me like they did, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> or was it just in their mind? Yeah, that, barbecue. You know, it tastes like, this tastes like uh, such and such and everything. Yeah. Oh, but just another comment. Uh, you know, from, from back when I studied botany in high school in Israel, there were theories that were shared with us about what the manna may have been. Okay, actually, and one of them, there, there is something called uh, chubeza in Arabic, or in, in Hebrew, they call it lechem arabi, which is it literally translates just Arab bread. Are, are, have you ever heard of that, Mary? Or, or no, no, in the Rabbi Rabbi Norman Norman is, yeah, yeah from, from, from when we used to camp out in the Sinai. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so so these are actually, yeah, these are among the plants that I had to go out and pick and dry in the pages of a book so I could have a nice, you know, collection of, uh, but there is a little, 
of the fruit of the plant, the so-called fruit, which isn't really fruity, uh, that grows after the flower, of course, is fertilized and, and, and falls off, <coughs> is, is, quite, <coughs> is quite edible. I wouldn't say it's great cuisine, and I couldn't imagine it, you know, being a, you know, staple of the diet, but, you know, ju just an interesting theory that, that, you know, uh, one, one of the plants that may have been uh, uh, that uh, manna. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, um, who has not had a chance to read that would like to read? No, I haven't read yet. I'm not sure. Go ahead, go ahead, Steve. If well, you would read 10 all... through the end of 15. Okay. And Moses heard the people weeding, weeping, family by family, every man at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly, and Moses was displeased. And Moses said to the Lord, Wherefore hast thou dealt ill with thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I brought them forth that thou should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nursing father carries the sucking child unto the land which you would swear until their fathers? Uh, when should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they trouble me with their weeping, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. I may not, a I am not able to bear all this people myself alone because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee out of hand, if I have found favor in your sight and let me not look upon my wretchedness, wretchedness. So definitely, uh, he, he, he oh, could have asked for a raise instead of, instead of you know being being killed. You know, right? Yeah, yeah, but but there's a very blatant fetching on the part of Moses, I would say, at this point, who's who's uh, clearly fed up. Okay. Any other comments? There, there, you may have commentary t to this effect in 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 your. Uh, in your uh, uh, translation there? Uh, I don't think frustrated. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that uh, somewhere in the commentary, I'm trying to find it, it was saying not so much fetching as what did I, you know, where did I go wrong here? I've done everything that you told me to do and I've got, the, and the, you know, no, they're not listening to me and what do I do now? I, I see it more as a feeling of of uh, feeling like a failure rather than right. yeah, overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah I, I, mm -hmm. I I I've always seen this and I picture it in my mind uh, as the first first steps um, towards burnout. Mm -hmm. You know, professional yes. leadership burnout. Um, and there's a, there's there is a midrash that showed that it's not so much that that all these people came to Moses, it's that he's beginning to sense you know depression and here and there and frustration, and he's out walking amongst amongst the camp, and and so it, it talks about that he hears the people each you know each at their at their when he walks past the door of each of their tents it's not like they all came to his tent and lined up it's like he's out there's this picture of he's out you know depressed depressed <laughs> and sad and frustrated and walking and all all he does at, at every tent he hears people complaining and weeping and you know and whatever and he said you know and he says god i just can't do this by myself anymore Okay. Yeah. It, that's it, where Etro came by. I I thought that that was the first part, the first time that Etro comes and tell him delegate. Uh, 
Right. Then uh, this this is going to be you know for that's that's later. TV, just, you know, right? But but it was the same same kind of thing. Yeah. That, well, yeah. Well, well yeah. Jethro Jethro warns him that this is Jethro senses that this is starting to happen. Is the way that I understand right. the story. And right. and Jethro had already said something similar. You know, to him, this is going to happen if you know if you don't ask for help from among the 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 leader the other leaders in the in the uh, from the clans yeah marty yes uh, just for a moment looking at the language itself i would say it's inescapable that there's humor and humor is not something that we associated with the bible but uh he's saying am i supposed to nurse these people, <laughs> you because know, because I gave birth to them, <laughs> which is an yeah. interesting image. Okay, so so he's being a little sarcastic. So, yeah, so, yes, he is. Yeah, it's yeah, it's sarcasm. For me, it's poetry. It's it's a beautiful yeah. metaphor because it's very much understood what he means. You know, these are not my kids. I didn't give birth to them. Just leave me alone. Yeah. And so, basically, the commentaries here in in uh, Plout, the Plout edition, he says the people weeping this time. It's the rebellion had now apparently spread to every clan. The burden Moses had not wanted the leadership in the first place. You know, he says this at the burning bush and never cease to consider it burdensome. And then the my the commentary about my wretchedness, and this is interesting. It 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 says the the uh uh Maseratic uh, text preserves the tradition that this is one of 18 places where the scribes change the text. <laughs> To avoid disrespect, for Moses had really said either their wretchedness, that is, he did not want to see the misfortunes that would befall the people, or your wretchedness ascribing evil to God. That's why I asked to be killed? If you interpret it with, uh, with your uh, your wretchedness being interpreted as that uh, that he's responsible for all these misfortunes that would befall the people that have befallen the people. But fifteen is a very strange in my mind uh, uh, verse. Well, what would have happened if he said their wretchedness, just on the surface, instead of my wretchedness? He wouldn't be assuming the responsibility of the people if he was saying it's, you know, they did this. And I think in this Leave sense, me out of it. Right. Yeah. Would separate himself from them or being their leader. Okay. That's yeah, and, and wretchedness, wretchedness. Uh, I don't like the translation. I, I see more. Okay, what my, would you put? My, what my, your... my failures. Okay, my failures. Okay. You know, but my, you not feel my, very bad not, about not your my, failures. You know, you know, uh, you know. Yes, he's belittling himself. But yes. I think it's more. You know, you know. I don't want. I don't want to have to live with with my with my sense of failure. Or uh, the, the Hebrew is ra'ah, so it's badness, basically, generic. Yeah, sad, sadness, disillusionment, you know. The works. Yes, Beth. Uh, my commentary uh, basically <laughs> supports what the rabbi said. Um, it says, uh, under my wretchedness, for example, the failure of his hopes and efforts, the despairing complaint of Elijah in uh, 
1 Kings uh, chapter 29, uh, 4, and of Jeremiah. Yeah. Uh, in uh, 25, 10, my wretchedness is failure to fulfill the task which he cannot abandon because God given a feeling of woe that arises whenever a spiritual leader toils vainly and wearily with the dull masses to whom he is tied by feelings of love and duty. Mm -hmm. so, right. Yeah. I, I, I think that the, I, I can't imagine what it's like to be a prophet. It's just, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a thankless job most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jeremiah yeah. is a very, yeah, sorry, sorry, Rabbi. No, yeah, no, no, go, go ahead, Mary, go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that this is with Jeremiah, this is an interesting metaphor that Jeremiah used, uh, bl um, not bless the open, curse the day that my mom got pregnant with me. So it's uh, it's a it's a very powerful thing, as if you know that pregnancy is a miracle, and it's in the end of God. It's not something that we, because it's my mother. Um, I I this this verse for me it's it's, it's one of the most powerful ones, and Irmiao Jeremiah is also the same. And now I'm uh, thinking why. Uh, but it reminded me of that. Yeah. Yeah, Marty. Yes. Marty, pardon me for that, because I'm I'm going to have to leave. Yes, you did mention that. Um, there are places in the Torah, especially in in what we call the wisdom literature, that Tov and Ra, which would we would normally translate as good and bad or good and evil, uh, are also translated as success or failure. So it's it's not you know it's not an un, unknown connection. Um, so I wanted to bid everybody a Shabbat Shalom. Uh, next Saturday morning we do have a service at the temple. Um, one thing that was not mentioned at services last night, that people should have gotten uh, emails about it, is that on Monday evening there is that uh, Yuval uh, Malka the the Shlicha, is doing a program interviewing um, with people who have recently been to Israel and telling of their their personal experiences. And also there'll be some comments and prayers about uh, the most recent tragedy with the six who six hostages who were killed. So um, if you can get the information through uh, the, either through the JCC or through our website or talk to Stacy or, or it whatever. It was a blast from, from Monday evening. I think it's at seven o'clock. Yes. So, um, okay. Thanks everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Shabbat Thank you, Shalom. Rabbi. And, and, uh, tell Lynn safe travels. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to add, underscore some of the, the things that people have mentioned. With regard to uh, uh, parent and nurse, this concept uh, that we've been discussing, three point, and, and this is a commentary by Daichis, D A I C H E S. I don't know if this was a rabbi or some other commentary, I don't know. Uh, three points emerge. Both God and Moses are angry with the people. Moses blames God for having laid on him the burden of nursing these refractory children, and he feels unable to carry the burden alone. A fourth point, that, uh, that if God cannot do better than this, he had better kill him. It is, and it's, this is a startling rhetorical flourish with which he emphasizes his complaints. This is the only time that we have an image of Moses as a parent or, nur or nurse of the children of Israel. The very rarity of the image suggests that it is used in extreme ex exasperation. And it looks therefore as though we, are, we have here 
a genuine tradition of Moses being driven at one point nearly to despair by the people's lack of discipline and self-control. Burnout is a good description. Also, something that occurs to me, actually, uh, Marty, is a Jewish mother. Uh, yes. Moses is the ultimate uh, passive-aggressive Jewish mother here. <laughs> okay. Very good one. Let me, I, 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 why did I live to have such ungrateful children? Let me just drop dead right now, you know, in front of you. It's, I, and I by the that. way, everything that's, that's been said, I have heard, yes, I've heard similar examples about <laughs> people whose children have gone astray or things like that. Yes. Uh, and and it, it's very descriptive. Now, here's a, however, uh, Rabbi Horowitz has a totally different take on this. Moses, uh, and he, this is entitled Moses Sinned. Moses asked God to kill him, a cry uttered in despair. He should not have allowed his lips to pass such a prayer, for it betokened a diminution of his respect for life. Therefore, he was punished by having part of his spiritual substance removed from him. From this, we learn that no man should curse himself. So there's another Midrash uh, about this. And we're going to hear a little bit about uh, what what uh, befalls. Uh, we may not get to it all today. We'll see. But uh, uh, it, uh it, it alludes to something we're going to be reading very shortly. Uh, any uh, any other comments here? Yes, Beth. Well, I think what we're going to see, at least what I see in this, is that um, both discontent and um, I'm going to say joy, joyousness are. Um, they're sort of catchy, you know? Yes. And so when you've got all of the sadness around you and all of this discontent and people weeping, um, and, and you feel like you're the only one that sees the good, um, it's difficult to, it can be difficult to maintain. And so as we go into this next, portion where we're sort of spreading the joy spreading the the power spreading the belief um it's it's a way to turn the masses <laughs> because you're not the only one who thinks that way that's right isn't there another song uh, into every, mm -hmm. uh, that encompasses into every life a little rain must fall. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. but this is a, a storm. Yeah, <laughs> Let's, I was going to say this isn't just a little rain. This is this right. is a flood. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, uh, let's see who hasn't. Uh, I guess we're uh, we're back to you, David. Uh, would you care to read? Um, uh, verses 16 uh, through the end of 20. Okay, here we go. And afterward, the people journeyed from Zeroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Where are you? Verse six, Numbers eleven, verse sixteen. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm jumped ahead too far. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, we haven't gotten very far today. <laughs> A lot of discussion. Okay. Sixteen. Is this is this right? Um, and the Lord said unto Moses, "Gather unto me." Yes. That sounded about right. Yes, that's it. 
Okay, if we the bear and oil will sell any more. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tent of meeting, and they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and speak with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, would that we were given flesh to eat, for it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, but a whole month, until it comes out of your, out your nostrils, and be it loathsome unto you, because that that ye have rejected the Lord who is among you, and have troubled him with weeping, saying, Why now? Why now came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses oh, said, Okay, that's that's good to be. Okay, thank you. So what's happening here? He he's gonna Go ahead, Grace. Oh, they're gonna overstuff them. <laughs> he's gonna stuff yeah. them with so much meat. They're, they're going to have belly aches, and then they'll have a true reason to feel, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They, you know, since you doubted my ways, God is saying, I, I'm going to let the burden be shared among all of these priests unto the people, and the people are going to get meat, not just one day or two days or three days. They're going to have it for a whole month, and because of their gluttonous, behavior of whining this is really not going to be so pleasurable as they would like to have it I, i'm just kind of talking out loud and I think no but i think that you, you you that you what you said was right on target any other comments god's saying i'll show you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, you know, or, go ahead, uh, Steve. You want me to get it. <laughs> what that preceded that, that we went through quickly, is actually the creation of the Sanhedrin. Of, of the what? Sanhedrin. Oh, the yes. Elders, that is a, you know, tradition that persisted throughout the first and second temples. That, you know, you there were 70 wise men who are uh, essentially the uh, leaders. And there's a little bit of Midrash, you know, where, where uh, the rabbis elaborate and fill in the gaps a little bit. And uh, supposedly Moses said, well, how am I supposed to choose these 70? Who are the 70 people who are uh, going to be uh, these elders? And so God tells Moses, well, you're going to choose uh, 70 overseers, 70 who have been overseers in Egypt, which kind of surprises me because that sounded like he was saying, choose the capos, you know, but but uh, act actually the implication is choose the people who were willing to uh, suffer the consequences if the children of Israel weren't meeting their quotas. So apparently these were the, you, you know, whoever is that concerned about the people, uh, these should be the elders. These should be the leaders. These will be your uh, 70 uh, helpers. Very good. Very good. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude. I have to go because my roadrunner is here. For those oh. who know about him, they'll you'll you'll understand. But he's looking in the window, waiting for me to come out. So, um, but he hasn't said, started pecking yet. Um, <laughs> You're well, in trouble if he starts getting angry. You better go feed him. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Bye bye. I right, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye, Beth.
I, I'm often amazed as to what comes up, uh, you know, in in our lives that uh, you know. Here we're having a a, a, a a deep discussion, and we're trying to have a deep discussion, and a roadrunner comes into the picture and takes her away from it. <laughs> it's not just a roadrunner, though. She is friends with that roadrunner. Yes, I know. I know. She's That's why she does it. Right. On an, or her on an ongoing basis. That's right. It's a, it's all about food. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it's all it, about it, it wants meat. It it's wants crazy. meat as it, opposed it, to it, manna. It, it's all about the human experience, what people resonate to, how they live their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really, what, for me, that's what is, I take a look at certain things and and uh, try to analyze and, and kind of figure out why and when and where and all that. It's For me, that's interesting. That is very interesting. And each one is different. That's right. Any other comments at this point? Okay. Uh, we, we can still, yeah, we still have some time here. Good. <clears throat> if, uh, let's see, David read. Um, I can read. Okay. If you would kindly read verses 21 uh, through the end of 25. Okay. But Moses said, the people who are with me number 600,000 men. Yet you say, I will give them enough meat to eat for the whole month? Could enough flocks and herds be slaughtered to suffice them? Or could all the fish of the sea be gathered for them to suffice them? And the Lord answered Moses, is there a limit to the Lord's power? You shall soon see whether what I have said happens to you or not. Moses went out and reported the words of the Lord to the people. He gathered 70 of the people's elders and stationed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down to, in a cloud and spoke to him. He drew upon the spirit that was on him and put it upon the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they spoke in ecstasy but did not continue. Two men... Oh, wait a minute, we'll get to that That's next 25, week. yeah, sorry. Okay, we'll get to that next week. Uh, and any comments at this point? I I would like... My, my allusion, connotation, what came to my mind was in Christianity, the issue of having one bread feeding everyone, I think it's also yes. about fish, uh, which, you know, God can do everything he wants, so she wants, so they want. So are you questioning me? That yeah, I that's, can feed you for a month? That's right. Uh, uh, yeah, my, yes, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I, 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 thought, <clears throat> I thought Mary was going to mention, when you mentioned Christianity, I thought you were going to mention the uh some of the uh uh sex uh have uh speaking in tongues and handling uh, snakes uh which was uh what was happening here was speaking in tongues they the people they say which was mm -hmm. actually uh something in the older prophets so that's not the prophets who got written up in books but prophets like samuel they would go into what's being translated here as going into ecstasy, but part of that is a little bit of a trance and babbling, okay? And uh, so, so that's so so that's what's actually being described here is almost a prophetic scenario, but but a prophetic scenario of the old school, which involves speaking in in tongues quote unquote got it Moshe was a navi yeah but the 70 elders get get to do this too you know so they, what is the difference uh, well the 70 elders are or speaking it going into ecstasy and speaking in tongues okay well now so what is the difference between a prophet and the 
people speaking, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, speaking uh, I, from a, a trance-like state. I, I, I think the implication is these 70 elders have to be uh, somewhat inspired, okay? They're not necessarily prophets at the level of Moses. It's not saying right. they are, but they have to have some sort of inspiration so they can fulfill their job accordingly, okay? Which is also, and this is, uh, you know, the older idea of the people, you know, this is our modern, in our modern religion, we all have direct access to God, but that wasn't the way it always was, okay? There were intermediaries, and there were people of inspiration who were the intermediaries. A prophet of, is, uh, is relating information that the prophet received from a higher power to the people under him, the people that he's leading. That's the way I see a prophet. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and 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 so and that and that the people believe this believe the person who believes he's a prophet. They believe in that, so it's all it's all connected. But they, they might not listen. That's the well, uh, that that doesn't negate uh, what what I said. They may listen. They may right, not. Okay, right. But but but. Uh, it's, it's about the prophet receiving information, so he says, from a higher power, and he relates that to the group yeah. that follows yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, uh, Marty, I think yes. it's a good place to stop, or I need to leave as well. Okay, we can stop here. We can come back to this discussion because... We'll pick up on it when, because there's more to the discussion about uh, ecstasy uh, as we yeah. that, that fin that will finish weeks. this chapter. Right. Two weeks. Two weeks. We will come back. We'll come back. Just review it a little bit, and then we'll we'll uh, go into it. That's fair, Mar Rabbi Mary. Thank you no. very much. Thank well, you. Uh, thank you for your insight. I thank really you, enjoy. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Steve. Thank you, Steve. And yeah. I got to well, wish. Question, Marty? Yeah. I have a question. Not about the parsha. We're we're finished with that. Um, what what did Mary mention about two weeks from now rather than one week? Well, we'll be next week, as the rabbi said, there's a Sabbath service. Saturday service. So we will be so we will not be meeting. And we will be doing a uh, uh, we we will resume. Re resume. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, but, we'll but resume me, everything in two weeks. Let me make a quick announcement. Okay, that that two weeks is is that going to be the twenty first? I uh, would assume so. Yes. Yeah. So, so we yeah. we will the whole thing will be on Zoom. That will be only by Zoom. Yes. Yes. So I'm, I'm not going to be opening the uh, synagogue at all that day. I won't be here. But we'll still meet. We'll still, uh, it'll all be on Zoom. Right. Okay. Shabbat okay. shalom. Shalom shabbat. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, Steve, for everything. Yeah, Steve, I'll contact you for that information. Good Shabbos. Okay. Good Shabbos. Shabbos. Steve, did you hear me? Oh yeah, yeah. The um, I forgot even what information we were talking about. You were okay, talking. I, I I need to know how need to get. Password. You need the password. I need, I need the password to get into the uh, the show farm newsletter. Yeah, yeah. So so please, yeah, please send me a text or something, and I'll remember to send it to you. Okay. Uh, I don't do good with that. Can I? Can we talk on the phone? Can you give it me over the phone? Uh, I could give it to you over the phone, yeah, but I may not remember to make the phone call to you. I'll call you. Okay, that's fine. But pick up the phone when I call you, please. <laughs>